We see it here with ATP. At the end of the day, ATP is the currency that cells use to function. This is how much energy a typical non-Parkinson cell makes. This is how much energy patients with Parkinson's make. So there, there is an energy deficit. You are coming to the table 15 to 20% depleted. And what we see is the, that depletion is also associated with less endurance and strength. Okay. So what that means is everything is more difficult. When you reach for something, it is harder for you to reach for it. When you walk up a flight of stairs, when you rise from a chair, when you're undoing your belt, washing your hair and shaving, I, I, it, it is really hard for both patients and their partners to realize, like I, I hear every week, I'll have a patient tell me I take a shower and I just want to go back to bed. Like I, I spent my chips and, and it, you're not lazy. You're just have a hole in your tank. And despite the, the gas you're putting in, you're not getting a full tank's worth of gas. And so this is where we need to talk about what can be done. Um, how do you monitor it? I am a big fan of monitoring. I believe knowledge is power. It's not just about weight. There are lots of different size and shapes. All these people can wear it, weigh the exact same. Um, 150 pounds can look a lot of different ways on a lot of different people. We aren't just talking about weight. We are talking about composition. You can be big, you can be small. I need you to be strong and flexible and agile, right? Strength training, yoga classes, really, really need to work out. Weight training can take on so many different forms. Your body is a weight. Yoga counts as weight training in my book. It, um, don't hurt yourself, work with a coach, a trainer, a physical therapist, but we do need to get you strong and we need to turn some of that fat mass back into muscle mass. We aren't just talking about putting calories in, we're talking about how do you, how do you change the composition of what you are made out of? And this is something that you can't do with diet. You have to use these muscles. You have to demand that they work harder. And the more you demand the work, the more the muscle gets built. Um, I just liked that picture. Um, and so there are all different kinds of ways that you can actually measure what you're made out of. These are calipers. This is a pretty common way to measure uh, fat content. We do it on the back of the arm or you know, pinch somebody's inch around their torso to measure fat. There are these fancier tools where you get in a tub and we measure how much fluid you displace and things like that. Um, I am a big fan of these weight, these um, withings is my favorite. I've now ordered several of these scales that track body composition. I have this one, this $99 body plus one. And I absolutely love it. Every morning before I get in the shower, I get on it. I don't need a pen. I don't need a paper. It records it all. It sends it to my phone. I can look back over the last year and see how my percentage of fat has changed, how my percentage of muscle mass has changed. Um, and I actually find it super motivating to, to you know, decide I am going to work to increase my percent hydration and muscle mass. I don't care about pounds. I care about composition. And so these scales are getting better and better at being able to do it. And a hundred bucks for a lifetime um, ability to see that feedback, I think is pretty impressive. And this is amazing. I think this is great. So yes, I already showed you how as we age, our muscle turns to fat. And this is what is happening to most of us. I would like to show you what a 70-year-old triathlete looks like. Right? This is not inevitable. Yes, there is the current of aging that brings us all downhill. But I'm here to tell you, you are all in a position to swim against it. You get out what you put in. You know, this is not an inevitable wasting away. It is, oh, as we age, if you don't get your booty in gear, this is what happens. 